All right, so we're just gonna let this start running while we're getting ready. Is it on now? Yeah, we're live, but it's gonna take a couple minutes. Yeah, cool, awesome. Things gonna come in for a second. So we're on. It's gonna take a couple seconds for some people to start showing up. So uh, Mark's gonna be over in a second. What's up, Price Fund Nation? Uh, if you can't uh, tell already, this is not Mike or CJ today. It's gonna be Tim, Natural Body, uh, Ben from Neutral. In a second, we're gonna have Mark Laser from Neutral coming over. We're at the Naturals Line release party in Ozone Park, New York, at Natural Body. Uh, people coming through, people checking it out. We're going to have Jimmy Rivera, number four, Bantamweight in the UFC. Here today, we've got a couple of top-level NPC competitors, all of Team Nutribile that can make it out. Uh, we're very passionate about our new line, and we wanted to make sure we could uh, show up to Natural Body and blow it can out. Can we move it? Yeah. You want to show them, like, sure. like, show them the line, and then... So right now, over here, we've got our, our setup. We've got a whole bunch of athletes. You see Nick Walker... Tony, a man in the back, Dan slinging products, educating everyone. In, in the uh, vein of Price Cloud Nation, we should do a, a taste test because that's, I feel like oh, yeah. we always do that. Yeah, so here, absolutely. let's put this down. You and Mark can sit and talk a little bit about why we're here today. Okay. You guys take up the samples? Yeah, I'll give the samples for you guys. Everybody, Mark Lage here, CEO of Nutribio. You guys just met me, Tim Gritzman, uh, general manager, partner of Natural Body. And uh, we're here today uh, for a couple of reasons. We're launching our new line of Nutribio Naturals. So we brought in our pre and our intra, which are both uh, art no artificial flavors, no artificial sweetens, totally natural. I learned today, you're, they might not know this, your entire line, none of it has artificial colors. No. So Ben corrected me because I was saying, not only does it have no artificial sweeteners or colors, and he's like, nothing. So even if, they, even if they're not particularly looking for the natural side, right. your whole line, I think that's important for them to know. Yeah, and this gets a little tricky, and I might get off track here, but I always like to be people to understand this. We have not used any artificial dyes in the existence of Nutribio, so we've never done that at all. That's why you don't see any color. So, I mean, I've been in the industry 10 years. I didn't know that. So, But I'm going to yeah. show you something else here that's going to really blow your mind, because you're going to see on our, like, our uh, green apple, it's not going to say natural color. Okay. It's going to say no dyes, and here's the reason. The FDA is kind of weird. I can flavor something with natural flavor, and that flavor just has to come from a natural source. Okay. So I can make, let's say, a strawberry uh, shake, and I can make it with different flavors, as long as they're natural and call it natural. But when it comes to color, the FDA just says, not only does the color have to be natural, it has to be natural to the flavor. So if I make a strawberry protein, and I use a beet juice to color it, it's not considered natural when you're laden. It's Even crazy. though the beet juice is natural, so it gets kind of weird in that way. So you actually, to call it natural color, it doesn't just have to be a natural origin. The color itself has to come from the exact flavor that you're using. So it's really screwed up out there. The way so, so beet juice to make strawberry kiwi, can't that call color, it natural color. It can't, okay. Yeah, so it has natural ingredients in it. There's no artificial ingredients in it. So I'll say there's no artificial dyes in it. But yes. I can't actually say this is natural color. So when we do our sweet tea, it's natural flavor, natural color, and natural sweetener. Okay. When I go to my green, my uh, green apple, it's natural flavor, natural sweetener, and there's no artificial ingredients dyes. in it. But and there's no dyes in it. Dyes, yeah. But we're using spirulina, which is a natural ingredient. It's an but, apple. Yeah. yeah okay. So it's kind of weird. It's for price cloud people, they love to hear this kind of stuff. No, I mean, so it's very interesting the, for them. They rely on you. But you'll for see, them. nobody really follows that. So it's all. All the stuff here that says natural color, we'll see a lot of it will have other things in there. And there's nothing wrong with that because those ingredients are still natural. It's just an FDA loophole. When you were explaining this, I was thinking that this is so convoluted that most yeah. brands have to get this wrong. Yeah, they do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's just a nutty thing. But. So what do we – What uh, you probably know it by sight, but that is green apple pre? Yeah, this is green okay. apple. So we're doing green apple pre. This is the naturals. Uh, it's one of two flavors. I think we have everything coming. Yeah, this, is, and, this is pre as well. So. And we uh, – I mean, this has 28 grams of active ingredients in it. So what we did with this, we didn't get rid of anything uh, and compromise to, to bring it to a natural, make it taste good. We didn't get rid of anything at all. The only actual change we did this is we got rid of uh, caffeine and hydrous and we replaced it with uh, pure caffeine, organic okay, yep. caffeine coming from uh, coffee beans. 
so that's the only thing really changing for me. Otherwise, it's the same 28 gram hardcore hard pack, and that's holding back this natural line is we're not compromising the ingredients at all. Yes. Yeah, we're keeping it. And you don't often see that. I mean, that's a, that's an important point too. Is like, like I feel like the industry exists on two ends of the spectrum. You have like the hardcore that care about the end result, the outcome, and they don't care much about the how it got there. And then you have the naturals are like, oh, we'll we'll accept a, uh, you know. Uh, a lukewarm performance because it's it's very you know natural but and i i think that they accept it because that's all that's really been yes. there before so they're trying to get something natural and they can't because you know nobody's been doing it so what we did with this line is we introduced the natural bca earlier this year and that's totally fermented uh ice loose and loose and bailing yep. so no hydrolyzed nothing like that nothing comes from duck feathers or human hair, human hair yeah. really fermented that's all we use the whole line we did our uh we had a, a natural Isolate earlier, but we switched that to a grass fed isolate this okay. in the last few months, and we have our vegan protein. So that was the start of this line, and now it kind of completed an entire stack. So yes. We have the pre workout, we have the intra workout. An unabashed fan of, of intra blast sweet tea. So, right. um, I mean, I, I like to say I at least somewhat know what to look for in a product, and, and that was by far a cut above. So I'm really excited to see it come over. Now, which is this? This is pre sweet tea. Okay, we're still doing pre. So we're doing pre green apple. I didn't do this yet. The first thing I noticed is it smells exactly like a Granny Smith. Like it has very distinctive. That's my favorite thing about our green apple is that it's, a, it's an apple. It's not a yes. Jolly Rancher on this one. Right. Yeah, this one, the other one tastes more like a Jolly Rancher. Yeah. yeah. This one tastes more like a regular apple from the natural market. But I think those yeah. natural people are looking for something that tastes more like a natural fruit. Yeah, I mean, this is hard. When, you're, when you have a six, seven gram dose for pre workout, it's easier to flavor. When you're putting in 28 grams, yeah. and I mean, we have 3.5 grams of uh, fermented blue seed, in here, six grams of citrine, 2.5 grams of betaine, 2.2 yeah, yeah. grams of carnison beta alanine, 1.5 grams of tyrosine. This thing is really, really low. Yeah, uh, so and it's things that are notoriously it. bitter, right? I mean, right. Not, yeah. not, not even saying stevia aside. Right. That's the first thing I look for, by the way. I don't want to hijack your thing, but most stevia products I know of are have a distinctive like bitterness to, or like a, I don't know, it's just a sticky. If you've ever tried a stevia product, you know what it is. It, it doesn't really have that. It's not It's not over the top. It's not like um, like a puckering green apple, like you said. Yeah. It's just a gentle, but it doesn't have the bitter, which I like. Yeah, it's, I mean, I could yeah. drink a lot of this. Yeah, I think we designed it that way purposely because the natural market is not into those crazy flavors yes. that the regular market yeah. is. So we went with that like Jolly Rancher style green apple on the other one. Here we're going for a more neutralized, neutralized product. And, and that's, that's why we did it a uh, tea version yes. of it as well because the natural market is looking more for that kind of product. And I'm I'm a recent uh, convert to the CrossFit community, but um, I'm not getting on my pedestal here. I'm, that type of training, though, you guys. One of the reasons why I liked your Intra Blast even before is that that flavor is not preposterous to drink in the middle of like a, a very winded workout. Right. Some of these things you pick up, and you're, if you're sucking air and you try to go like candy blue raspberry, it's like it feels like you it like picks the, the like you had wine, like the tannins right. picks the, the lacquer off your mouth. So, this doesn't do that. So with that in mind, I want to actually want you to try this one first. This is the Intra Blast Sweet Tea. Okay, so yeah. you tried. Three green apple. Yeah. And I think Mark did the... I did both of them. So you've tried our, our green apple. You've, now you've also tried our artificial uh, into last sweet tea. I want you to try this one because when we tried this, actually with CJ on this channel, the first thing that we all said was this is uh, refreshing. It's 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 nice. And I, that's how I was saying. Endurance athletes, yes. like crossfitters, like you're going to, you're, you're sucking wind, you're running through your shaker bottle, you chug it, and it's not a salt in it. Yeah, this is our intra blast. 10 grams of essential amino acids, EAA, 7.2 grams of branch chain amino acids, again, fermented branch chain yeah, amino acids, good. 5 grams of glutamine, we put yeah. BK like in there, yeah. uh, OKG, ornithine alpha ketoglutarate, an ingredient that I love that we've been using for almost 20 years now. Uh, so this thing is it's just cool. Green, and why do we have two products right now, the same flavors in regular and, and natural? Yeah. Uh, what are we going to do with that? And, you know, I, I want to say, I'll give credit where credit's due. I think it was Mike or CJ, so I'll give them credit on their channel. Thank you, guys. Um, they rolled out the, the hypothesis that maybe the addition of, of five grams of organic cane sugar, make sure I have this right, um, is, is going to be a, a boon for performance in the intro workout, and we shouldn't be afraid of that. And I definitely feel that way. Uh, and I would I would encourage the, the rest of the listeners to feel that way too. And I hope nobody, it, it's a deal breaker for them because, number one, um, you know, I think performance carbs are what they are, and there's a lot of um, very conflicting things about this, but 
But if, if you're not training hard enough, that five grams of organic cane sugar, it's not going to derail your workout or, or your – even people in ketosis, we, we have some studies where intra-workout carbs are not going to kick you out of ketosis. So yeah. uh, it's, a, it's a compromise I'm more than willing to make, especially if the outcome is this flavor. Yeah, I think that's one of the questions we got from yes. Bryce Powell. Are we cheating by adding organic cane sugar? And the answer is no. We're trying to make a product that's natural, that's sweetened, that's fresh, that's, that, that's good for the natural marketplace. And if you're doing a pre-workout and you're taking my 28 grams – and five grams of sugar is going to affect your workout to the negative. You shouldn't bother wasting your money on my 28 gram yeah. doses. <laughs> that's, that's what, what it's all about. It's about yeah. hard ass, hardcore training. And if you're not going to burn five calories, you know, 20 calories I mean, yeah. of uh, of sugar on that, then and don't forget you're sipping it over time. Same with the intraglass. You're sipping that intraglass over 30 minutes, 40 minutes. So yeah. there's you know there's nothing there that's going to spike insulin, that's going to give you a sugar rush, a sugar yeah. growth. There's not enough of anything in there. I think that it's a bit of a knee yeah. reaction too in the industry too. Like I, I'm going to first carbon Some of yeah, that yeah. works. Yes. I mean, uh, Sarah up in the front. First thing we told her was some five grams of sugar in the intro workout. She's like, I don't know how I feel about that. We explain it's, it's only 20 it's, calories. You know, you're going to burn that on the way from the gym to your car at the end of the workout. This is like a pet peeve of mine. Like, like yeah. number one, you, you, if you slap a fancy label on it and you call it designer carbohydrate, people will probably peel off $60 for it, which right. is crazy. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, it all ends up as blood glucose. But uh, again, not to reference coffee again, but my community is um, terrified of sugar. They're terrified. And look what they, how they train. It's insane. Yeah. Right. Like, people are terrified not just of sugar, but of carbs. I mean, yeah. all these carbophobes out yeah. there. We have pre and we have pre-extreme. The main difference is we load pre-extreme. The 15 grams of plus addiction. Yes. People look at it and say, oh, no, I don't want any carbs. You know, that, from what we've seen over the last literally 20 years, the majority of people get up in the morning, they don't have breakfast, they don't have any food. By the time they get to the gym, there's nothing in the body. There's no yeah. energy source. They work all day. They run to the gym. Afterwards, they haven't eaten or anything. Again, they're already in this catabolic phase when they get to the gym. The body's in starvation mode. Now, they increase, increase the metabolic strain in the body. They don't have anything in their body, whatever, and they're starting to burn off the oxygen. They're burning off, instead of just calories, they're burning, they're burning off muscle tissue yeah. during their workout. So I'm a big proponent of putting good complex carbs into a pre-workout so that you're fueling your body straight to the workout. So my pre-extreme has 50 grams in it. I dump, yeah. Yeah, I dump another 25 grams minimum of cyclic dextrin into that product. As I as I train, so I want to stay in that anabolic that catabolic yeah. phase where I'm burning muscle instead of building muscle. And, and uh, one one last to put a bow on that, sugars are protein sparing. This doesn't get talked about enough. If, if your if your uh, insulin levels are elevated, your blood glucose is elevated, it is protein sparing. So like yeah. like cortisol is just its main job is to put glucose into your bloodstream. It'll get that from muscle tissue, doesn't care. So yeah. But I think know, really I think the, the biggest crazy point which you know, made was that if you're not training hard enough, that five grams of sugar doesn't yes. matter. Yeah. You don't need twenty grams of VA. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yeah. When John Meadows was here, he had a great discussion about that. Like, you might not be training hard enough to deserve an intro workout, but as you get into your training, all of a sudden, it, like the people that are truly advanced and nuanced, they understand it and how good it can be. Yeah, absolutely. So, so this is the pre-sweet tea. So I kind of I want you to notice the difference between the intro sweet tea and the pre-sweet tea. There's obviously different ingredients in there. It's going to be a little bit different. So first thing I noticed, uh, not rehearsed. This tastes more like a lemon snapper. Yeah. I get a note of lemon, uh, which I like. This one is more like a pure tea to me, uh, but different, but, but good. Right. And the reason we can call this a natural color is because we're not even adding any color to this. Uh, the color is coming from the tea itself. So we're all using two different types of tea to flavor this, and we're getting color directly from it. Yeah, I mean, I, I, so this is not even like a, a natural flavor or a tea style flavor. We're actually using tea. tea. Yeah. Tea so, tea. Yeah. yeah. And we're coming out really cool thing. We're coming out at a grass bed, uh, matcha protein next month. Oh, and yeah, so we're, awesome. we're flavoring that actually with matcha, one gram. So you're getting that antioxidant effect. So now the flavor itself becomes it's an active the, ingredient. So yes. that's one of the newer things we're moving to. Cool. Products. How do we take the inactive ingredients and utilize them as active ingredients, like malgast or you know, to enhance the flavor? It has a positive effect on the body. How do we utilize it? Cool. That's like the next phase of what we're doing. Uh, sort of kiwi strawberry. strawberry. Yeah. I mean, actually, I think this is maybe the unsung hero of the day. I, I, I think it's actually kick out. Yeah, there's absolutely insane. no bitterness. Yeah, in that's what I, I wanted to, again, I don't want to interrupt, but the, the thing that keeps sticking out to me is any Stevia product I've ever tried has an aftertaste. There's yeah. no. And it's all, it's funny because we've tried so many at a certain point, it was like the good products had just an aftertaste of it. Yeah. And I was like, oh, well, I didn't taste it the whole time. But there was a little bit, this is nothing. And that's a pain in the ass in a workout because you're kind of yeah. like, you drank it and you're like, it's coming back on you. You're now in your set, you're under heavyweight, yes. and you're still thinking about the horrible taste. Now, if you tried our, our natural BCAs, 
Those have a different flavor profile than those. We're going to be changing those also because we figured out how to use stevias and different types of stevias to get this bitterness out of it. So we're going to be changing that over the next few months as well. So don't judge that flavor by this flavor. It's a totally different system than you. We're not going to be adding any uh, sugar to that, but it's going to be, so it's going to be a little bit better. Cool. So we've got our, like, our initial stuff out of the way. Um, you guys talked about the, the cane sugar and how it's not, we don't see this cheating because you know these, these uh, people should be training hard. Um, another thing you just kind of came out this week is uh, our true facts, something that Mark's been kind of pioneering, uh, getting, putting out there uh, something fact panels that are our true facts that aren't rounded, but really true to the bone. Um, what's been the main challenge of that for you? Uh, well, the first challenge we never thought about doing it. I and mean, we, we I put a rant out a few weeks ago, and the rant wasn't really made to be a negative how people were cheating. It was, I get probably two to 300 questions a year from people sending me supplement facts panels. We're adding up the macros and they multiplying it out by 449, and it doesn't come out to the total calories. And they think oh, all my competitors are cheating and they want me to pawn them out. Right. And most times they're not cheating, it's just that they, they're forced to round all these numbers by FDA. So you can't multiply it out and get that. So yeah. the, mo- the industry is forced to do that, and people think that the products are bad, right. and they're not. So 99% of the time, you're multiplied out, and they don't make any sense. You've got to stop doing that. I mean, if they're off by 20 30 40%, then there's a problem. Yeah. If they're off by 5 or 6%, the total calories versus the macros, the protein, the carbs, and the fats, and you multiply it out, then you probably find it's around an issue. But then we talked a little bit about the scams out there, how companies purposely create their products so they can utilize that rounding to their advantage. Right. Like take a, a product of protein and it, it's at 4.51, they can call it 5 grams of protein. It doesn't make much of a difference when you're taking a 29 gram protein right. from five, gram. yeah. 5 grams and then you have to take 20 of those like, yeah, so that. yeah. That's not that the main reason we talked about that. It really show. Uh, that you can't just multiply that. So now what we created is this true facts, and it'll be on our website. We can't put it on the label, but it's going to show every ingredient out there. It's going to reconvert over the daily values and all the values on it to the actual numbers or that are pre-rounded. And when it comes to amino acids, we put the core content. If people don't realize uh, branching amino acids have more calories than even protein. And yeah. If, that, if you're taking oh something God. like that, well, in, I was going to say. I watched that video when you when you heard it was a video right when you discussed this uh, the true facts and the, 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 the biggest eye opening to me was companies because they're forced to comply to this is why the label looks misleading right if they, they didn't have to comply it could be accurate right which is why you have to listen on your site right? right okay so yeah I mean you get your sugars you might have we used to put it on our label and during one of our last audits it was all that we can do yeah so we used to have like it would say fat. 0.4 grams. You could be more accurate, but to comply, you can't. Right. Yes, okay. Right. You, you're not allowed to do that. You're not even allowed to put zeros. So if I have no fat, no carb, uh, no sugar, I can't put those zeros. We used if to have a lot to proclaim that. Yeah, if yeah. you looked at my label two years ago, it would say sugar 0.3 grams, uh, fat zero. All that had to come up. You're not allowed to use it. It's like less than half, isn't yeah. half a gram. Right? Yeah, so you, you can do less than, but you right. can't put like. Well, no, if it's less than half a gram, you can't do that either. The, the, the rule is if it's zero, you can't put it, or if it rounds to where it should be zero, you still can't put it. So yes, the, law says, it. the law says under five grams, you may list the zero, but then a second law says that if it's zero or it may be listed as zero, you can't put it on the label. So you can't disclose it on the supplement back It's kind of screwed up. So companies are forced to do that. But what I've said, also companies will formulate and they'll drop the dosage from 25 gram protein yeah. to 22 so that their fat goes from 0.51 to 0.49. To get under the. Right. Yeah. Now, here's the, the thing. Cut off. So. Yeah, but that's not really also because if you claim zero, so if I'm, if I'm here right now and I'm talking about my protein and I'm claiming I have no fat, I'm not allowed to do that. Now that I claim it, I have to have no fat. I can leave it as zero on the label, right. but I can't put on my label zero fat on there as an advertisement if there's 0.4 grams because now I'm lying. Yes. So okay. ethically, it's not allowed, but also by FDA guidelines, if you're claiming something, it has to be true to the label. So you can, if you go below 0.5, it's hit zero on the label, but you can't say zero fat. Yes. So it gets really confusing if you want to do it the right way. Yeah. And I think one of the coolest things about the whole issue of true facts is that it really came to light because of uh, consumers like price plus consumers that are now educated enough to ask, why is this label coming up wrong? Right, but there's other things also, like yeah. we're putting the uh, caloric value of amino. So if you take yeah. something like nitric acid, there's a hell of a lot of, of calories in there. Yeah. Protein is 
four grams, but let's say Lucy is, I think, 6.31 calories. That's 50% more than actually protein is. So you can have a four. I mean, if you're looking at that, and that's going to expand as we find more and more things to add to that. We want to do is show, you know, the full picture, fully undisclosed of what's going to happen and all and everything about the weight. Cool. So third, uh, what's next for the natural series? Is it more flavors of existing products or new products being brought to it? I think it's both. I mean, our main goal is to create a, a full performance package. Proteins, pre-workout, get your workout, BCAs, and get that on the market. Get it so it really tastes good, so it's uncompromised, so people can actually use it during the workouts. Uh, now that that's out there, that's why we're having that big launch today. The whole yeah. program is complete. We're going to be adding more flavors to these. The next thing that's going to come out is super carb. Cool. So we're going to we have super carb unflavored right now. So if you like to add super carb to your pre-workout, that's plus addiction. Uh, or you like to add it to your intra workout, just buy the unflavored, add it right to it. But if you're taking it on its own, within the next two months, we're going to come out with a total natural flavor uh, of that as well. And then we're going to expand. I mean, we say these five or six products, but we probably have over 100 more products that are natural right now. They're just right. not in that label. Right. They're just in other bottles. And, you know. Well, maybe they'll permit the uh, sort of flavor question. Is, are there certain flavors that are harder to achieve naturally? Or is that like, you know, let's say the, the Nature Biofowers anointed the next flavor as blue ass. It would be a situation where. Yeah, it all, it, it all depends not just on the flavor, but the ingredients and the products. So you can take a flavor that works great for pre, you try it in your ingredients in intra, and you just can't get it to work. Blue raspberry worked great for pre, but for intra, it just tastes disgusting. Yeah. yeah. So you're kind of moving them around between the ingredients that you have, the type of product that you have, to try and make them work. Well, I think you know that comes up a lot. So like, okay, they both have sweet tea, but this one has kiwi strawberry, this one has green apple. You know, why yeah. is that based on what they think consumers perceive as desirable flavors or something else? And I think it's it's both. both. Yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Sometimes uh, people want a flavor, we just can't get it to work for that particular type of ingredient base. Cool. Right. Awesome. All right. So uh, for Tim, uh, a couple of questions. So you're, you know, you guys know Tim. Tim's an expert in retail uh, psychology. So kind of what we talked about before. I wish we'd gotten that on video before we talked about it before. But we kind of want to bring questions more about the end consumer where Tim really excels. Right now, protein bars are really big in the industry. Mm -hmm. Everyone's kind of coming out with a protein bar. Um, what are the hottest bars right now? What are you looking for? I think there's two types of consumers when it comes to bars. Those that want, uh, they have very rigorous standards when it comes to macros. Okay, so they want no sugar, one sugar. Uh, they want no lactose. They want uh, 25 protein, 30 protein. So they have like a, a set schema in their head. Of their, they want this thing. And they're willing to compromise on taste. It's this behavior a lot. Like, like nobody's going to profess to you, we would roll the tape back a couple of years. No one's going to say the Quest bars are the best bars, but they're saying, oh, it was the only bar that could fit my, my dietary requirements. Uh, the other type of consumer is far more indulgent. They are still looking for something that flies under the banner as of healthy, but they, they want something that's a treat. And I think I, I see the split, and it usually it, it's determined by how uh, like ingrained into health and, and fitness they are. Like people that, that are in a, a very rigorous, uh, restrictive diet might, might willing, willingly compromise taste, and then other people want indulgence. So I say that's sort of like the the overall behavior patterns, and then um, you can flip it around. That, that's probably the hottest bar I sell right now. Uh, <laughs> no, the MRE bars. Pointing at the MR, which I, I know have are, are very well liked on um, Price Boss channel. And I think it's because they did something different, right? And there was this like zeitgeist of real food in our industry. A couple, uh, I don't want to say it was started by Piana, but they started this whole thing where like like dairy proteins weren't as good as real food. We know that's not true, but it, it sort of caught on. And, and yeah. I, I do tell consumers all the time, that if you were just taking in all dairy proteins all the time, a lot of way, that's a nice break. That, uh, sure. I'm pointing at the MRE bars, just like the MRE protein, the MRE light, it has the, it's like beef, chicken, salmon, egg, pea, I always miss one, but it's like that. It's, it's a whole food proteins. Um, people, I, I think somewhere dairy got a bad rap. Dairy is a really anabolic protein. It has almost the most BCAs by volume versus even like um, animal proteins, meats. Uh, so I don't know why dairy ended up on the wrong side of that, but dairy is an anabolic yeah. protein. So uh, if you have no allergies, there's no reason to avoid it, but maybe you're trying to balance up. So they've been really popular lately. It might be in the margin of the product or something, but the consumers are really demanding it. And people keep asking, why doesn't you try to have a bar? Yes. 
So for the channel, Mark, could you explain a little bit about bars? Actually, we had two different bars many years ago. We had something called the Bio Bar, which is a smaller bar, just pure protein, very little carbs. And then we had a more of a high protein, high carb bar that was called uh, Muscle Matrix, uh, which is the name of our, of our protein line. Uh, back then, we were too small to uh, to really support it, so the bars were. You know, sit around, you got to make huge amounts of them yeah. back then, and now the industry has changed. You can do smaller quantities. We had literally about truckloads at the time. Uh, so we just haven't got back into it. Yeah. We've kind of lost out on that, but we're looking to do that. It's a different yeah. skill yeah. set, right? It, it is. It's, it's, yeah. I know. it's also something we can't manufacture. Right. So when we do a bar, we're going to have to find the right manufacturer, manufacturer that we trust, manufacturer that's going to let us in the facility, watch the production of every single batch of bars that we do, right. because we'll never be able to actually put the equipment in there to run just our line of bars. Yeah. So that's kind of the thing, because we manufacture everything ourselves. That's not a negative on any bar, yeah. but we're going to have to incorporate that concept of manufacturing to get into that bar facility and see how it's made and test it and do all the things that we do to make sure that every single ingredient will be tested. You have like the highest standards, so uh, yeah. you're going to be very yeah, picky. Like in that company, that bar company, nothing will be allowed in unless we've actually tested the ingredient ourselves. So the product ingredients that have to go to us, into wow. them. So it's going to be a whole thing that we have to do. Yeah. And it's, it's more than just popping out. Cool. So uh, this is another another one that we kind of want to talk about what News is doing in the, in the topic. but. Uh, our customers coming in asking for new tropics is online. This is their big topic right now. Our customers coming in looking for it. Um, what new tropics are you suggesting? And you know what's new tropics stance in new tropics? So it's kind of a two prongs. Start. Yeah. So okay. I think this again. This is my take on it. I am in a fortunate position or, or, or not to be your perspective, but I, I can I can interact with hundreds of customers a day if I so choose. I can take the pulse of my retail guys who are doing that. I think. Customers have like a discretionary daily caffeine allotment or intake. And within that, for me, it's probably five, six hundred at the top end on a low day, two or three hundred. You know, and this is true of your parents, right? They have coffee. Everyone's in this bracket. How they get there depends. And and people are willing to to maybe sub one for the other. So now I think what's starting to happen is people are saying, okay, I normally would have started my day with coffee, but I can get the same amount of energy, which is typically caffeine. Uh, it, but but I might be able to derive these other benefits from it as well. Right. So they're subbing. I don't think people that are you know, waking up and having some caffeine and then maybe having a, a caffeine pre-workout are now saying, I'm going to bolt on more stimulants into my day somehow. And maybe I mean, you know, they have a study sprint or something. But yeah. that's what I think is happening is people are saying, well, if I can get my energy, but I can also get a cognitive boost, I'd yeah. like to do both. Cool. What was the second part? So the second part is um, what? What do you recommend in, in the realm of new tropics? What are you looking for in a product? Uh, so generally speaking, obviously caffeine is kind of like the, the base level. Uh, I like some sort of choline donor. I think um, CDP choline, alpha GPC. There's there's some expensive like whiz bang versions, and then there's just regular old choline by Tartrade. Uh, DMA is a choline donor. So this is going to increase your, like your perception of focus. Um, there's some evidence like I know they recommend people that take Adderall. They chew through choline faster. They deplete their wow. acetylcholine. Um, that's why they grind their teeth. Okay. So you can you can ameliorate that by taking choline. So like that's a good one. Um, once you get past that, uh, Ruperzine to, to keep the acetylcholine from getting degraded. That's also galantamine. Um, well, man has a good take on this. Man sports. That's the third part of the question. It's, it's kind, of, kind of interesting because uh, I personally, like, as far as Eutropis goes, I don't want caffeine. So I want to take it at a time. I also don't want to powder. It sounds like a lot of the we've been talking about are powders. I want to be able question. to just take capsules. Just, just very quickly. Yeah, so. we're, we're not going to talk about what we're doing. We have a, a nootropic coming at it. Uh, Nutribio was actually the first ever nootropic launch in the sports supplement industry back in 1996. We came out with uh, 50 micrograms of cuprazine, uh 10 milligrams of glucosamine, uh, ginkgo, and we developed this product with some, pharma, some pharmacies. Uh, and we put it on the pharmacy industry. It was a really cool product. But what happened to it, we had it out for many years. And we worked with contract manufacturers. We also brought some marketing. We ended up filling with another 25, 30 ingredients. They were all in prop lens. So in 2001, when we got rid of all prop lens, we pulled that product off with us. Although those three ingredients were listed on the label, the prop lens was pure bullshit. And I got rid of it. So uh, we're a little bit behind now because the industry is caught up in it and the tropics are very big. Uh, so we're launching, I think, on the tropic probably within the next three months. Uh, so far, I, I'm not a big believer in putting caffeine in there because I'm working on cognitive function, I'm working on memory, I'm working on focus, I'm working on that end, and not just a CNS stimulant. 
Yeah. And like you said, so every, there's caffeine. Yeah, hours. this is that idea. PCAs have caffeine. It's but like you only get so much per day. So I'm with, like, yeah. given my, my uh, druthers, I would want a caffeine-free nootropic because I'm going to take it with something. Right, but, right. But for whatever reason, most companies are launching caffeinated nootropics because you guys all know that everyone wants to feel everything. So right. we have to, caffeine if it, they don't feel it, we're not, yeah. it's not doing anything. So. It's like pre-workout. You know, pre-workout, you pull out your stints. Yeah. That pre-workout should stand on its own, alone, on all the other ingredients. But people mm-hmm. are used to the stints that the caffeine overload, the DMA, the DMHA, the acetate, and they feel that and they think it's working. Well, I'm a stim junkie too, so I like that portion of it. But when you pull that out, the pre-workout, all those other, the citrate, the beta alanine, yeah. the beacon, all that stuff's got to work on its own and be properly dosed so that you're getting those benefits. It can't just be the bro sides of the gym say, oh yeah, I took this nootropic and I felt the buzz and the buzz is coming from a CMS stimulant. might make the workout more pleasant, but it's not actually improving yeah. performance. There's so right. much you can do with a nootropic as far as focus, as far as memory, as far as clarity, and that's really what, what our benefit here yeah. is. This cognitive effect and not just a, a site specific. You, you said a good word before that I don't think many companies address this memory. Like, why are you taking this? Maybe you have a, a test. Maybe you, you're trying to re- uh, read something and be, like, it's, it's worthless if you can't recall it later. Right. But everyone's like, oh, let's just get them gassed up and they'll be. Yeah, I mean, if there's been a trope that a kid's going to play as a game all night long, that's going to be caffeinated and stiff so you can sit there and yes. focus. Yeah. If somebody's walking around during the day and now can, can use their mind more, like our product. Uh, uh, Neurogen was called, we can't use that name anymore because somebody else took it, uh, was huge in the golf community back in the late 90s and up to about 2000 because what happens is these guys would play around two rounds a day and after nine holes they would lose their concentration and their game would go downhill. And by putting Huprazine in there, which is a seed pulling esterase inhibitor, and the protein and these other ingredients, they're able to focus more, they're able to relax, not just get a stim effect because yep. you don't want that when you're playing. When you're playing yep. So that huge, we have pros effect that we're taking it just for that purpose of being able to focus, keep their mind straight throughout the entire eight yeah. holes. And that's where the purpose to me of an atrope is. And yes, memory is another part of that. You know, it's not just a stim, it's, it's increasing your short-term and long-term memory, which is, is very important. There's a lot of good ingredients out there that can do that. I think that, that versatility without that caffeine is important. Because then you, you're, you're not handcuffed. Go. I hate exactly. that. That's what, you know, when I've given recent supplements maybe a lukewarm review, it's because now you're handcuffing me to 200, even 400 more milligrams of caffeine. And for me... You said the stimulant, that's knocking out something else that I'd want to take. There's yeah. an upper limit for everything. I mean, if you're going to do caffeine and nootropic and you just want that little hit, you know, I keep it at 80 milligrams yeah. just to give you that yeah, little bit. Something and that's all you really need. Yeah. And then you can take with other products every day. Just to add, I mean, we're just getting over I mean, everything yeah. has caffeine in it. You're putting this in your daily diet every day. I mean, you're taking yeah. your pre workout before work, whatever. Uh, like us in the office all day, we're drinking every workout, we're taking uh, some caffeine every here and there. You're, you're then like kind of pigeonholing if you can take that product or not, and that stuff adds up very quickly. Um, like we were trying out those capsules with TV, forgot there was caffeine in it, all of a sudden we're taking three or four of them, and it's like this adds up. Yes. Your whole daily, all of a sudden you're over a gram for the day, and it's just really not good for your maybe. System. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Like, there's so much work that can be done. You know, with cognitive, cognitive effect you know, without having to say, yeah. hey, hold on, we got to take a break. You're Jimmy Rivera. Come on over. Get over there. Get over there. So, Jimmy Rivera just got here. Jimmy Rivera is number four in the UFC right now. He's one of our athletes. He's been with us for many, many years. Just want to introduce him. He's got, is this live? This is live, yeah. man. Yeah. <laughs> so, Jimmy's uh, here for our uh, opening, grand opening on our new product line. Uh, just say hi to the team out there. How you guys doing? <laughs> guys, you definitely try out the new product. It's unbelievable. My wife swears on this. Uh, <laughs> Jimmy, you have a fight coming up, right? Yeah, uh, June 1st. You guys can check me out. Main event, Utica, New York. Um, Fox Sports 1, if you can't make it out there. If you can, it's about three and a half hours, four hours from the city from Queens. Yeah, Jimmy had a fight uh, with supposed to play Dominic Cruz. That was the fight Cruz. He got hurt, and then yeah. he went to... John Lineker, and he got he hurt. He got hurt, so that fight went down, and then you had somebody challenging you all day for, to come to meet weight with you, and you, you kept accepting him, you kept dropping weight, and you accepted and accepted, and you finally said, fuck it, I'll do whatever you want, yeah. and he pulled out of it, right? Yeah, he pulled out and of now it. You fight. Now, now you I'm fight. fighting. Now I'm fighting. All right. Now I'm fighting. I'm going to lay it down. Yeah, so. So that's coming up when? Uh, June 1st. He put me on the spot. He puts me on the spot all the time. Yeah, he's alive. How are you doing? I'm doing good. You're doing good. Right? Uh, I'm sorry, I interrupted. What was no, that? absolutely not. What are you guys talking about? We're on Price Cloud right now, and we're just talking about uh, what we're doing here at Natural Body and the new product line. Awesome. I'm going to let him keep doing that because he's really good. But I'm going to come back in a few. And then he's going to be doing a demo in a few minutes, but not with me. I'm, 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 we're going to demonstrate. Are you demo? Yeah, we're grappling. 
We can rap a little bit. You want to go? We go a little bit. I gotta get a little more free, and then I'll be able to. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so we got one one question to kind of finish it off, which I'm really excited for. For Tim, Tim, you, you know, you're a retail psychologist. What is what are the retail trends right now? And, what is Neutron missing out on? Is this Neutron on board with where the industry is going? What are the things you think that we're missing out on? Give us the status where you see. So one thing we see, and we own stores and a website, is that there's a there's a difference between immediate consumption, you and I were talking about this earlier, and then yeah. post-consumption or future consumption. So by that, I mean if you buy a five-pound tub of protein, you intend on consuming this in the future, and it's going to sustain you for a month or two or, or what have you. And immediate consumption is um, all of the incredibly red-hot categories that we have in our industry, like Bars. Um, we were just talking about bangs. Bangs. Yeah. Have, I mean, there's. We have 14 flavors of bangs in our food, and there's like more coming. And people like DM us like, when do you get a new flavor bang? I'm like, well, oh, the, the 14 that we had weren't adequate to choose from. So, so, but th- these are things that are difficult to buy for future consumption. They, they only want number one. We talked about earlier. You and I. They're, they're uh, costly to ship. Number two, if you buy them for future consumption, you're tending to to commit to a certain so like. Who would want four cases of bang in right. a certain flavor unless you had one that just, you know, eked out all the rest? Yeah. But even then, you get bored. You even see the same behavior probably you guys in your own. Um, people are absolutely loyal to your protein, but they, they flavor hop perhaps. So I think what's keeping retailers going a little bit is um, sometimes it's easier. We, we're just talking about where we're at in Queens. There's probably 100,000 cars that drive past our, our, our retail store every day. And people that want immediate consumption, it's not a purchase that you would buy online. Right. Um, so that's one, I think. Um, and you guys, you maybe talk about how you get into that space with a bar or something like that. Um, and then the second part of the question was, uh, like, what do you see? What, what are we brands? wrong with? Yeah. This yeah. Is, as far as I would say the other thing that Nutribio has done an exceptional job of staying above uh, the noise, and, and, and it's a credit to you guys. And I think Mark's main main mission is to educate people, and I've learned a lot from him. But um, a lot of brands proclaim that they have the best something, and this yeah. drives me nuts. And this is a hobby horse I get on all the time. I always say best for whom, best for what, best for why, best for when. It, it, and what's best for the, that guy that just walked in might be very different for me and, and then the next customer. So it's a, a brand can't proclaim to have the best widget, the best pre-workout, the best protein. Um, that's a matter of preference. That's idiosyncrasies. It changes. It's a moving target. Um, Jimmy might be cutting and that, that would change his you know, supplement. So it, it just wears me out. And I think maybe what we're doing um, well is we help troubleshoot this for people that are not Price block caters to people that are like I, I was speaking to Mike, I think, on Facebook, and we said these are ingredient wonks. These are people like us that maybe make a living in this industry or adjacent to this industry. So we're on top of the research. We we um, look forward to new regulation or, or changes and how to like from the, under that hood. But the, the lay consumer just wants to lose some weight and so forth. So we're not relevant to them, but but brands maybe need to to calm down a bit with the proclaiming they have the best thing and maybe do more work on sorting out who would be the ideal use case or when or why. Because we've seen a lot of customers just run into walls because they were led to believe this was a certain thing and they they almost bought some sort of deal and they buy very emotionally and then they, oh my God, I can't take this, it's too strong. It's a non-starter. And I agree with that understanding. We have store chains out there that'll have just a whey protein isolate in there. We go in there and we're trying to train them on what the, on what, and how to use whey protein yeah. isolate. Not if you're a huge fan of us, but everybody walks in the store, pushes the whey protein isolate. Because now you're going to have some parent coming in with a 17 year old kid who plays uh, basketball. He's six foot two, weighs 97 pounds, and he's trying to gain weight. And they love our products, so they take it to our isolate because that's all we have in the store. We don't want that. So we like to work with stores and train them what is this particular product for? And if it's not for your customer, don't even use our product. Take them to something else in your store that works. Because, yeah, just like you said, our product, I might say my ice cream is the best out there, but it's the best for a specific purpose. And that's probably not 50% of all the people that need it. You want to to get that person to the exact product that's good for them at that time, and their goals change. And that's one of the the reasons I think we came here and watched it, because we're, we're really out there working on educating people on the back end, how to manufacture, how to get it, how to formulate and all that. You guys have been doing this 22 years of working with the consumer and, and matching that product to the consumer and matching this protein to this goal and this pre-workout to this goal. And that's really what it's all about for retail stores. If you want them yeah. to put your customer in What's a problem that, store, that maybe can't be solved online? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, through the front door of a site without some sort of concert. So, right. yeah. uh, and customers use this as like a, like a troubleshooter. They'll say like, what's your best pre-workout? 
Yeah. And we have to back them off. But I feel like there's brands out there that just, you know, obviously you can't say not your own product. So you say, oh, this is the best. And yeah. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, I don't think, I, I remember being that consumer that wasn't into the industry, didn't understand stuff. And I walk and say, you know, what should I be taking? They ask me like, well, what's your diet? Like a lot of people don't want to face that question. A lot, a lot of people just want to know, well, what's the best? Because they're probably not dieting well. They're probably not training all that much. But I, I think one of the biggest problems is uh, like price plows consumers are all very educated. We've talked about this before. But people that come into this store aren't turning down products because they're not proprietary. They don't even know. Yes, there's a lot of heavy lifting we still have to do to inform the consumer. I mean, yeah. this isn't, there's this like notion out there that retailers are predatory, and maybe that's true of these like big box chains that yeah. they just want the sale, and you know, in some level that's okay. That someone's trying to feed their family off the commission, but um, one of the things that we need to go natural by is none of our staff is commissioned, so they don't make any more or less money. Yeah, they, they want to sell you things that will bring you back because maybe you're you're moving towards your goals. Um, yeah. you know, that's my take. I came from. Uh, maybe a, an unhealthy sales culture, and you yeah. want to, to not do that here. I, you need to do that as a, a brick and mortar store. That's the advantage that you have. If your customer's coming in and you're just pointing them toward the highest margin ingredient yeah. product, and they leave and they don't get a benefit from it, they're not coming back. If they go to Amazon, they're going to buy a product, it's going to totally fail. They'll go right back to Amazon by second, third, fourth, because Amazon's yeah. not promising. Reviews is Online's the only... not promising that. They're just yeah. promising, promising selection and price. You guys have to match the product. To the person, so when they leave here and come back in another month, they do come back because the protein gave them work for their specific goal. The pre work work for their specific goal. That's the only way they're going to come back because if you fail at doing that, they don't come back. Yeah. Online, you keep going back and back again. Yeah. So that's the advantage. Well, and you're seeing this like wait, when we're putting the trends, omni channel, like Amazon is opening brick and mortars, yeah. bookstores in the grocery store thing, Amazon Fresh or something. Yeah. Fresh. But, um, like, I want that. We, we have a website too, right? I want you to be like, I'm driving past National Budget on my way home. I want to get a bag. Okay, come see right. us. And then maybe, hey, hey, man, how's it going? But then, you know, you have a coupon and you want the next order and it's $100. I know what you want. You can shoot that to yourself. Yeah. yeah. That, that being everywhere the consumer is, um, is a trend I think too. And, and, and that's one thing we have going for us is we have different presences online. Right? Yeah. yeah. And I think you have also strong will. I was just speaking to one of your customers. She's not from around here, but she comes here every month. She told me just to speak to you guys and just to learn what's going on. And then she buys it from your website, which she doesn't get a chance to get. So she has that loyalty that she's not necessarily shopping at somewhere else, but she always comes back to you because the people are trained, the people can educate her, the people are close. So it was a great testimonial. The first person I met when I walked in the door was your loyal customer who did, never heard of me and was talking about that whole, that whole concept yeah. of loyalty to you because of what you gave and what you told the This is probably a great time to say that you're actually teaming up with Price Bio and get on their affiliate stuff. So if you're looking for products, I mean, Natural Body carries, they carry a lot of Nutri Bio, but a lot of the, the leading brands right now too, the ones that are popping up. So if you guys are looking for Nutri Bio, you can actually get it on Natural Body's website now through Price Bio. We want to hook into their, um, yeah, yeah, like they're they're ref like so when you see on Price Plus when they have like a review and then they'll have like get it from these sites. We're gonna be in that channel soon, um, and then maybe just to spell the notion that retailers necessarily have higher prices. Yeah, because the prices in our store are the same on our website, which are going to be the same uh, in other websites. So again, I. I I understand retail on balance is in decline. Toys R Us just closed on stuff, and I, there are definitely bad retailers out there. Um, so you know, I'm not, I'm not all well, in on retail. The problem with, with Toys R Us is that they uh, serve it, the experience was awful. Well, they also pushed against Amazon or the online yeah. ch on the channel. They said, "Let Amazon sell the toys for us. We're staying in the store." Whereas you guys are embracing the culture. You get, you're teaming up with Price Cloud. You're, you're, you're embracing. And, thank you, Price Cloud. I mean. We joke like they started. Look at the name, Price File, which is the best price. But I think what their secret sauce, what they really do exceptionally, is because the reviews are amazing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, like I would. What, what Price File might maybe they could take a page of our playbook is your customers might choose to buy from CJ and Mike because they like you guys, yeah. even if it was two dollars more or two dollars less. You know, I tell customers all the time, I can't promise you I'm going to be the cheapest on every single thing you're going to put in your car. Right? Yeah. It's impossible. Yeah. It, you know, it, it's a moving target, right? Amazon's prices move hourly, but but on balance, I think the experience is good. And I think other um, websites or brick and mortar retailers that are doing that well are going to survive. But I mean, I mean, I buy a lot of stuff off Amazon and I return a lot of stuff off Amazon because there's no customer service rep that's telling me, hey, this is the right product for you. This is what you want. This is right. This is the highest quality. You guys have a great team here. I mean, 
you always have enough staff to take care of everyone that's here. And they're all educated. I mean, I've asked questions. I consider myself an educated person, but I still have questions, and they're always able to answer them. I think that that's something that Amazon doesn't have. It's also something that those big box stores don't have. Well, commodities should be bought. Like, if I need a new toothpaste, I don't know what I want. It could be here tomorrow. I'm gonna go, why wouldn't you? Sure. But, but maybe this is why we got an industry. Is these things that we buy, supplements are... are um, we're going to ingest them or put them in our body. It's almost like above food in terms of the ramifications um, yeah. for better or worse. After your health, health, they're emotionally tied to goals. Like I need to have a big deadlift. I need yeah. to break, you know, uh, my, my own personal record on a, a workout. You, you know, you want to train like you did 20 years ago in the, um, karate, right? So like those things are not like, you don't, you don't look at the salad you're about to eat with the grilled chicken in that way. And this is above that. It's yeah. the creatine I'm going to buy, going to propel me towards that. Yeah. So, these are maybe things you want to have a sounding board for. Yeah, I mean, and that, that could be that, press. I mean, that could be CJ and Mike too. Yeah. yeah. Whoever you trust and like, and, and that's informed, and that's what we're trying to bring. I mean, that emotional uh, connection is a big thing. I mean, yeah. you're selling them that new body or that new feeling. I mean, it's even it's, it's great power, but you don't want to abuse yeah. it. You can definitely abuse like yeah. like um, belly wraps or detox, like you know, our industry is such filled with scams that, that we want to be like the beacon right. of, of goodness or whatever. I think that's what both of us have in common why we do the launch. You know, yeah. We're doing it from one end, you're doing it from the other end. But the, the commitment is to serving the customer at the end. And a lot of people don't like to use that word, serve the customer. They think the customer serves them. Yeah. You, know, you want to hype up your product when the customer is coming and bowing to you and telling you how great you are. No, we want to do that to the customer. Right. We want it's almost like we want to treat them. We want to serve them because it's hospitality. Like, yeah. I kind of view this as like the hospitality industry. Exactly. Sure. You know, people buy from people that they feel they want to be around. But, it's, um, a, it's a great way to look at it. And you bring them in, you bring them to your house, you're, yeah, you're showing so them what we're doing. This is. is like our, our living room. So yes. it's, it's clean, that's why you shouldn't have to ask for things. We're, we're going to facilitate that. Sure. You know? It's like yeah. when your mom says, like, oh, if someone's coming over tonight, you've got to clean up. And you're, right. up and you're like, okay. Well, I think like the, the worst things I've ever had in a self store is walking into their room to you. Like, yeah, like, like, like you need to work for You're an there. intrusion. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm, I'm coming because I have a, a question. I have a need that needs to be filled. You, know, you should be happy to bring that to the consumer. So. Well, to put a bow on this whole thing and maybe tie it together, we have um, loaded on our site both flavors of the pre that we sampled and both flavors of the Intra Blast and Naturals. Um, follow all the companies involved, Price Bio, Natural Body Inc., and Nutra Bio, because um, we put a lot of content. There's going to be a lot of post-production content for this event. And I think for 48 hours, we are the only place in the world you can get these products yeah. uh, from naturalbuddyinc.com. So we have them loaded up. Cool. And uh, yeah. So if you guys have any questions, follow the, uh, the accounts, send us a message. And this weekend, only uh, get the products at uh, naturalbuddy.com. Naturalbuddy Inc. I-N-C, like incorporated, dot com. And then obviously we have four brick and mortar stores in the greater New York City area. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, we should also mention uh, just for a little fun that we're both celebrating our 22nd anniversary. Oh, show the shirts. Yeah. yeah. So, so we did you buy them, watch your 1996. 22 years strong. Natural uh, body launched in 1996. So you got 44 years between us of experience. And maybe we know, you know, yeah. on the right track. Yeah, and I, I think that we both have the same ultimate goal in that serving customer. We do it from two different ways. We're fighting two different fights. I know Steve Calvers. I watch him listen to stuff all the time. He's fighting for brick and mortar and trying to get better products, better consumers, and get people to understand products. And we're doing for the manufacturing. Where we're fighting different kind of fights, but the goal is the same. We feel customer. about the yeah. retail how you sort of feel about exactly. the manufacturing process, and, and sure. you know it, that without compromise thing is right. like we're unwilling. That's to, all. Yeah, you're right. You can see that. You can't see that. So there you go. Yeah. Well, that's the other word. But yeah. But it, uh, it's how it works together. together. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. There. Mark. Thank you. Bye, Price Plow. Thanks, Mike and CJ. Perfect.